is to organize the speech. So he'll, as you think about giving comments to this person, think about whether you felt that the speech was well organized. That's from the Competent Communicator Manual, speech number two. Time keeper is five to seven minutes long. The title of the speech is, Are We Truly Blessed in North Carolina? Are We Truly Blessed in North Carolina? Please welcome Sean Wolf. Madam Toastmaster, ready to begin? Okay. Are we truly blessed in North Carolina? Often when I meet someone and ask them how they are doing, they respond with blessed. That first made me smile and feel good because the person was not taking anything for granted. I also thought that it was an unusual response, not the typical good, fine, or mind your own business that I've come to expect. Blessed. And that got me thinking about religion in North Carolina. Are we truly blessed in North Carolina? Growing up in Rhode Island, we learned much about Roger Williams and the separation of church and state. For those that do not know Roger Williams, he was a political and religious leader who advocated for the separation of church and state, a presage of nearly a century before the Founding Fathers incorporated his ideas into the Constitution. He also believed that it was wrong to confiscate land from Native Americans. His belief actually earned him the wrath of the church and the banishment from the colony. The thought was that with the banishment, he would either have to sneak back to England and deal with the punishment or simply die. Fortunately, he did neither. He purchased land from Narragansett Indians and established Rhode Island. In fact, he lived to be 80 years old. Truly, he was blessed. Anyway, I remember when I first moved to Asheville in the early 90s, I did suffer a little from the culture shock. At the time, and I had a Rhode Island accent, and I think I confused as many people as, I, as they confused me. I remember that religion was forefront in many minds, the Bible Belt and all. In fact, it was some of these religious beliefs that tripped up my fiance and me a few times and get us to where we are today. We came to Asheville because my wife, then fiance, had an interview at a local religious college. She aced the interview and was basically handed the job on the spot. However, when it came down to the living arrangements and we said that we were not married, she was suddenly not the top candidate for the position anymore. That happened again when we were looking to rent a condo in Hendersonville. Our real estate agent then told us that we would first meet with the homeowners association. He said it was just a formality, but for us to tell him that we were married. He even gave us cosmetic jewelry to go along with the occasion. We got the condo, I wonder, were we blessed? <laughs> My first position as a center director in Henderson, uh, Head Start Center in Henderson County, I worked with a diehard Baptist woman. She was wonderful and I respected her dearly. She would tell me that she would pray for me on a nightly, because I was a Catholic and because I was a Yankee. <laughs> Did she know that Roger Williams established the first Baptist church in the very state from which I came from? Oh, bless her little heart, again with a blessing, and to cleverly mask an insult with a blessing. How wonderful is that? Bless her little heart. Translation, oh, what a cute little dummy. <laughs> what made me think of this blessed topic for my speech? Two weeks ago, I had a webinar training with the Department of Public Instruction for the state of North Carolina. <laughs> the webinar consisted of a PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> there of a PowerPoint, a slideshow, and a state specialist talking to all the participants. To ensure that we were actually paying attention, there was a comment box for us to respond to their questions. Fail to answer the questions and you wouldn't receive credit. A question was asked of the audience, what do you need to get through the PDP? That's a professional development plan. I wrote support in time, which was a pretty brilliant answer. As the answers scrolled through the box, I noticed two particular answers. Someone wrote prayer and another wrote Jesus. Instead of just ignoring it, as I had ignored so many other of the actual res of the responses, what did the state of North Carolina have to say about those answers? Well, they loved them. Mmm, that's right. Prayer. Go on and preach it. I was already sitting there in shock when they picked up the Jesus answer. Again, there was a whole lot of mm-hmms and tell-it responses. Soon the webinar was over and I got back to work. I had missed a telephone call from a parent that works with the DMV. I called her office number and got her voicemail. She ended the message with, have a blessed day. <laughs> Where is the separation of church and state that Roger Williams fought to the point of being expelled from the colony of Massachusetts? Where was the response from the state that 
the folks that said, no more, the line must be drawn here, no further. I went out into the parking lot to stop my head from spinning and to breathe in the fresh air. Then I looked around and I saw the surrounding mountains, the butterflies, and the flitting of butterflies through the, through the air and the smiling faces of the children and families that I serve. Wham, it smacked me right in the face, the reality. Really, look at all that I have here in this beautiful location with my job, my family, and my friends. What the hell? I am blessed. We're all blessed in the state of North Carolina. But when I'm in public, I'm going to remember Roger Williams and maintain that separation. I know what you're thinking. Bless Sean's little heart. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster.